I was like, oh, wow, I definitely need to be here. And so here I am. Here I am. So um, I'm gonna try to tell you about what we are going, what we are doing in France uh, around the internet access um, and non-profit internet access, a bit like uh, the same internet that we have here, uh, more or less. We will see the differences, and so I will try to to give you maybe. Uh, uh, um, the 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 will to do the same uh, wherever you are. So, yeah, the the title was very long, but uh, in short, uh, why you know ISP. So a bit of a disclaimer: we are just going to talk about access, not about hosting or transit. Uh, ISP is a very broad term. But um, in France, we use it uh, to, to describe uh, uh, internet access provider, Fournisseur Dex Internet. So I'm going to show you some places, and you will try to find what they have in common, but I think you will have an idea. So this is the middle of nowhere. This is uh, in the center of France, and near where I live. And this is uh, the south of France, Toulouse. So each one of these places have uh, community-driven ISP uh, providing access uh, around. And where does it all come from? It comes from uh, an old uh, non-profit organization called FDN, French Data Network. It's not a translation, it's the actual name. It's an English name. Don't ask me why. I have no idea. Uh, it exists since 1992. and since then, well, almost nothing has changed because at the beginning it was plain old telephonic system. Uh, and it has proven useful lately in Egypt, Syria, and I've just received a tweet uh, uh, in the afternoon asking me what uh, could FDN do uh, with uh, Sudan. There have been problem, the telecomics landline numbers have been blocked in Sudan, so they cannot use the, these numbers to access the internet. There has been a blackout, like in Egypt, and, uh, well, we, it has been proven useful, but it's not useful in all cases. And since, since 2005, uh, FDN uh, is providing ADSL access, which is very uncommon. I have no example in the world of a non-profit organization uh, providing uh, internet access through uh, this kind of broadband through ADSL. If you have any other example, please tell me, because I... In Berlin? Yeah, maybe. I, I tried to meet them, but, it, but maybe we have definitely to talk and to meet uh, with each other, because, yeah, like we don't know. It exists since a lot of time in France, but we have no idea that there are others elsewhere. Um, so FDN uh, has around 400 members. Uh, it's quite small. Approximately 200 people are connected through, through, through ADSL all over France. I gave you some numbers to show you the, the traffic, uh, the amount of IPs that uh, we have uh, to provide this access. And uh, it's the founding member, it's just uh, some side notes, it's just a founding member of a non-profit uh, local internet registry, which is called Gitoyen. And that is to say there are also non-profit uh, host hosting and hosting and transit and local internet registries uh, that we are trying to, to build, that we are building and using every day. Uh, tell me, have you already seen your ISP's routers? Because those are my ISP's routers. <laughs> yes. What is the difference between an FDN member and the customer? There is none. Uh, at least, uh, well, uh, we don't have any customer. Yes, and the member is, uh, in the four, uh, 400 members, you have the, 12, uh, the, the 200 uh, connected. That is to say you can be a member of the, uh, the organization without being connected. So it's, uh, 
it works like this. We don't have customers. We don't want to have customers. We have people building network together, doing things together, and this is very um, different from the commercial relation that you can have with uh, normal classic ISPs that you know. Yes, exactly. Every member is, uh, yes, every user is a member. So those are the routers of uh, my ISP. Um, and yeah, it's a photo that I took and you can actually see the routers and have uh, your SSH key on it and do whatever, not, not exactly whatever you want on it, but uh, uh, this is a trust network, where trust uh, organization and we are doing things together. So we have also uh, transparency in our core principles. So we have we provide public IPs to to our users, uh, v4, v6, VPN. People can ask for more IPs. People can ask for no, they can ask, cannot ask for prior authorization. We don't want this kind of shit in our network. We provide a true, real, working, natural internet access uh, without doing anything. It just works. Like we are been, we are volunteers. We don't have time to make it work differently from what it should work. So it just works. And people are each other, that's a very important thing. That is to say, if you want to you, to, um, to <coughs> manage your DNS uh, and so on uh, yourself, we can explain you how to do this, how to do it, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> so it's to a user, um, a comparison, it's like a choose your own adventure book. It's quite the same. We, it's generally the term we use in France to describe it. That you're the hero of your own story. You are the, the hero of your internet access. You can be part of it. You can have your say on the price. You can have your say on everything. Uh, how, how it is managed on the technical point and so on. And in 10, 2010, it was time to spread the word. Um, FDN was growing and growing um, uh, with the rise of Adopi and so on. Uh, FDN was a very, uh, maybe not uh, all of you know Adopi. Who knows Adopi? Okay, so I will try to explain quickly. Adopi is a free strike law, so it's a law that was uh, aimed at uh, making people fear uh, to share and copy on the internet. So if you are caught one time uh, sharing something on a peer-to-peer -peer network, you receive an email. If you are caught a second time, uh, you receive a letter. And then the third time, you were supposed to be disconnected. But with the great work of La Quadrature and many organizations, we managed to... to we managed that the constitutional, constitutional court in France say that the internet is uh, too important to let an administrative uh, authority disconnect people from the internet. And so that was, wow. And FDN was also a part of this uh, big uh, fight against Adopi, against this uh, stupid law. And so it, it grew, it grew uh, very rapidly and then uh, this idea that uh, the found, uh, not the founder, not the founder, but the, the president of FDN had at the time was to make copies of FDN. Why having only one organization where you can have more, like home uh, and the, the, the smaller camps and so on? It was the same idea. Let's copy it. Let's make smaller, small instances, and so. Uh, in 2010, Benjamin did um, a wonderful talk um, about do-it-yourself ISP, explaining uh, how, they could, how they could do it in France, how FDN could help do it, like by providing the basic infrastructure and by helping for the administrative stuff, like you have to, to operate, you have to fill a form. It's quite simple, but if you don't know exactly what to what to do, uh, you can be a bit lost and procrastinate and just say, ah, we'll do that next week, next month, and then you never know, 
you, you never do anything. So IFDN was like here to answer your questions and help in the process. And uh, FFDN was born, uh, which is a federation of uh, organization. And in 2011, uh, we were seven non-profit ISPs. I founded one, uh, one that you in a smaller region that you've seen uh, in the photo. Uh, at the time, we were like, as I said, uh, 400 members. Now we have 21 non-profit ISPs with uh, approximately 1,500 1, members all over France with projects uh, everywhere. Um, the actual running members uh, of the federation are the green points and in the, the blue, red, the yellow points are projects. And you can see that there is a, a red point in uh, in Belgium, it's uh, because we have we had friends at the time uh, very close to La Quadrature, and they decided to do the same and to build a, a non-profit ISP there, which is called Neutrinet. Um, it never really worked, but they are um, following home, and the talk I gave there, they are relaunching it, and they are really uh, having a new new dynamic. So it's really cool. Um, so here are the projects, you can see that there are many, and those are the actual members, and we are trying to uh, make people do things in Brittany and, and elsewhere. And for the time being, we are not connected to each other, we just use the actual infrastructure that is copper, fibers that we don't know, that we don't own. Uh, but we have in mind from the beginning to be able to connect to each other by any way, like we don't care about the, the support. Uh, internet doesn't care about if it's on the fiber, ADSL or whatsoever. We don't want, we, we really want to decentralize the network in France. All the network is centralized in, in Paris. If uh, someone here want to talk to someone here, uh, the network, uh, the packets go uh, to Paris, which is very, very bad, uh, not just on a technical point of view, but also on a, it's not internet, it's completely stupid. And uh, you can imagine the censorship that can happen when it goes uh, as far. And certainly in Paris, uh, you can quickly put a deri derivation to the secret service. Um, so we definitely want to decentralize the network and peer in uh, everywhere we can. So how to do this? We have backhaul contracts, that is to say contract to have the traffic from the users being brought uh, to uh, an Ethernet cable somewhere with, uh, where we have a router. And we also use 5 uh, gigahertz Wi-Fi bridges. Uh, to make um, a prolong prolongation, uh, to make extend the, to extend the ADSL lines or fiber lines uh, to provide access to dark zones. They say zones there are where there are no no bandwidth at all or no internet. And we also plan to to provide access through FTTH which is a big, uh, big issue. Um, we're not very close, but uh, we definitely want to do this. Maybe. We have a small project uh, which is called Fiber Camp in order to fiber, to put fiber, to deploy fiber in a village and we wanted to do this. We wanted to do this uh, late uh, last summer. It didn't happen for silly problems. Uh, but we have a list of requirements for a village to be fibered like this, and so we just have to find the the good situation. And the idea is to bring uh, like a small like a camp, but with uh, in goal to deploy fiber and so with approximately 30 people you can 
deploy fiber like this and yeah there are plans to do this so i want to give you some examples of this non-profit there is a rhizome it's in the north of uh, paris uh, in a student uh, it's a student isp but the city in itself is not a student city so there is no big residence for students they are split all over the all over the, the city and um, for them it's complicated because the city is not so funny, it's quite a boring place, uh, very bourgeois, uh, very rich and so usually they, are, um, they have uh, uh, trainings and so on so they are only in the city for six months, four months or so on. So they don't want to pay for a in big internet access, classic internet access for a lot amount of time, a big amount of time. So they want temporary access. And so this is how Rhizome has been created to, to answer this need. And so to provide a temporary uh, access through YLS is cheap, it's easy to set up. You just have to subscribe at the beginning of the year. You just say, hey, I'm gonna live in uh, this building and uh, yeah, um, that's it. And two weeks later, uh, the, the network is uh, designed by the, the students and they say, okay, then uh, you can uh, have your antennas, it's configured, you can come and have it uh, and then you pay uh, something like 10, uh, 10 or 15 uh, euros per, per month, and you just have to put the antennas uh, on top of your uh, of your balcony or your window, and that's it. And there are 50 to 70 connected uh, users connected like this. You can see one setup uh, with uh, so the one link uh, arriving and uh, going uh, elsewhere like this with. Uh, as you can see, uh, top-notch technology to, to make this happen. Um, now my favorite. Uh, it's in Toulouse. Um, it's tetanetral.net. They have um, the chance um, to have a member, the create a funding member who has, uh, well, some money. And then he financed uh, to put a fiber from the DC to uh, the squat, the artistic squat, um, which is 50 meters uh, away. Uh, it costs something like uh, 5,000 5, euros or something. And from there, uh, in this artis artistic squat, there is uh, the Teta Lab, uh, an amazing uh, aqua space. And so they put their routers there and so on. And they provide access to, through the wall city of uh, Toulouse on top uh, with wireless antennas on top of uh, this uh, squat. Uh, and with, uh, as an upstream, with an up, uh, as an uplink, the, the internet that they have uh, through the data center. So they do all kind of things, wireless, VPN, VPN, via hosting. They are both in dense and dark zones because they operate in Toulouse, uh, in the, the middle of the city, but they also operate um, in, the, in the countryside, just one hour uh, drive from south of Toulouse, where there is nothing. Um, there, they also manage to, to rent a fiber on top of which they provide uh, access through wireless. And they also do uh, an amazing stuff with providing access to squats without requiring any information and so on. Like, so it's quite difficult to know how many per users are connected through this organization. And they are quite amazing. They have documentation that is really amazing. And they have uh, like, uh, yeah, three, 300 members. And it didn't exist like three years ago. It's, completely new. And they have approximately 100, 200 connect users connected. And yeah, as I said, they use wireless on top of fibers. And you can see what they can, what type of thing they do uh, in the countryside to, in order to test uh, how they can manage to deploy links. 
Um, the third example is PC lights in Burgundy. They have uh, three, uh, 30 connected, approximately. Um, at first, this organization was, was aimed at teaching computers to old people and so on, and to everybody. And like they are really, really in the middle of nowhere. And some geek arrived, and he said, "Hey, that's cool what you are doing, but why not using your knowledge in computing to do internet access?" and copy what was go going on everywhere. That was one year ago, and now they are building uh, an amazing uh, wireless network. Uh, each node that you see is, uh, is one uh, house connected through the wireless network, one node of the network. Uh, and yeah, it's just amazing. We have, uh, we had uh, our general assembly there, um, this summer, and we were like 60 people coming from all over France, and yeah, it was really amazing. Like it was a bit like the camp with everybody coming from different parts and sharing experience. It was great. Why are we doing this? Uh, because we can have more control on the infrastructure, not a total control, but at least uh, more. We can spread knowledge, we can also have an impact on the political uh, uh, level, and because it's fun, of course. Like you can see, you can build routers, uh, home routers like this. Sometimes it's dangerous, uh, we don't see it quite well, but uh, that's, what that's what happens when you climb on top of churches to put antennas, and when your head uh, stumble upon this kind of thing. Uh, that hurts. <laughs> so, why are we doing this? Because we decide. We decide the services that we provide, we decide uh, the prices, we decide the technology, we decide everything that we are doing. If ever we notice something really nasty on the network, uh, we'll be able to say it, we'll be able to, to have a, um, a public impact and to say uh, we have contact with many journalism, with many journalists, many medias, and so we are trying to, to raise awareness on this, also on this level, on the access to the internet, not just on the user side, but also be a part of the actual network with um, when you can see all the shit that is being said in, uh, at the European level with the Commission completely buying the telco, uh, the telco um, bullshit about how the network are, set, are saturated and how uh, the Commission should do something about it and allow prioritization, prior, prioritization and so on. Uh, we are here to say, hey, you can actually provide internet access without um, making packets slower or something or without acting on the network and and so on. One important thing is that we share uh, everything that we do, everything that we know on wikis, IRC, we do a lot of AFK meetings also. That is very important. We don't want just to build networks of machines. We are here to build a human network on top of machine network. And we advocate, as I said, with journalists, politicians, small, small and medium enterprises. And one funny thing is that the cinema industry that we fighted uh, some years ago during Adopi, uh, they were pushing really hard for this three strikes law to punish copyright infringement, to punish the fact of sharing uh, their films and so on. Uh, now they are being completely screwed by some by some transport uh, distribution uh, companies uh, that are just telling them, "Hey, if you want uh, your distributor, cinema distributor, you want your film to be uh, transported to uh, every uh, every cinema, uh, yeah, we will do it, and it will cost you cost you a lot, actually." And so we have friends uh, in the um, uh, running cinemas, uh, small independent cinemas, 
and we had the idea to to go and see the independent distributors and tell them, hey, why are we not? Why don't we build? A, why wouldn't we build a, a, our own alternate system to distribute your films? Like, uh, and they said, yeah, if it costs less and it works, whatever. And we told them, yeah, it will cost less and we will use a technology that will allow you to distribute your films or, uh, that will cost you less because we will distribute the film to one cinema and then it will directly give it to another cinema that will give it to another and so on. And we didn't tell them but we are going to use BitTorrent to do this. And so this is really great. And yeah, we have fun, obviously. <laughs> um, the obstacles. Uh, in France, we had the chance to do this, um, to have FDN, to have uh, ADSL broadband, and so on. Uh, it is very uh, dependent on the legal framework. Uh, the burden on ISPs in France is not so important. Uh, the market also is, at the time, quite open, but it can be discussed. Um, and one big obstacle, of course, is the community human issue, because whenever you are doing something, you will encounter ego problems and so on. So this is something that you cannot uh, forget and that you have to take in, in mind when, you <coughs> when you're doing this. And more than nothing, you are building something that needs to last. You're not building some network, or some organization that will last for one year and then disappear because people will have fights and so on. Uh, you have to document everything. You have to take decisions on consensus and so on. Um, so that's what we have in mind, and that's not very easy. That's quite as difficult as having a, quite an obstacle like the market or the legal framework. On the EU level, too bad um, Steff is not here because he, he asked me uh, about uh, the EU uh, framework and while there is not so much uh, from, uh, from what I've seen, um, most important uh, is the country regulation, uh, the framework in each country because that at the EU level there is not so much said. <coughs> Pretty much each country can do whatever he wants. Uh, in the telecoms package, there is quite nothing about our kind of initiatives. Um, so, if there is nothing, maybe we can try to try to push things to facilitate what we are doing. Um, also, on the EU level, there is uh, Giphy, uh, one initiative, one project of the Giphy people in Spain, they are really great, they provide access through all uh, Catalonia uh, in Spain and they have built this initiative which is called Bottom Up Broadband, uh, it's a European thing and it's uh, aimed at gathering interest and fund EU projects and they have already deployed the fiber and they also connect people through wireless. Um, one obstacle, I, I, when I talk about this in front of hackers, uh, technical people, they, the first question that they have is, uh, oh, man, how is it possible on a technical level? They all, they, the first thing that they think about is the technical obstacles, but technical problems, but actually the technical stuff is not difficult. It's not the technical part that is a, a problem. Uh, we have the software to do this and more than, there are free software like Quagga, Bird, L2TPNS, Free Radius, OpenWRT. There's nothing difficult. Uh, once someone has done something, he can put it in a wiki and then tell others, hey, you can copy it. That's what we have done in, uh, in my ISP. We copied uh, what has been done in uh, Rhizome, the student ISP that I show you. 
And so yeah, we have the software, we have the, the solutions to do this. Uh, what is going on elsewhere? That I presented you what we were doing in France, but we don't have um, so much communication between initiatives uh, all around the world. In Spain, there is Giphy. Uh, in the US, there is the Free Network Foundation. I had the chance to meet uh, Isaac at the CCC camp uh, in 2001, 2011, sorry. Uh, and it was a great meeting and I was very happy to meet him. And they are doing amazing things in, uh, in the US. Mm, not as big as they, they should be, but uh, it's really great what they are doing. There is also Linux in uh, Italy, in Berlin, uh, in Germany, uh, Altermundi in Argentina, and maybe elsewhere, but like it's very difficult to know what is going on, and people are, tend to stay in their own bubble and uh, don't communicate, so it's very difficult. And that's why we launched a kind of mailing list to, to have people uh, gather on a single place, on a kind of a hub to have people discuss and exchange and say, hey, I'm in this part of the world, I'm, we are doing this and so on, and to exchange share knowledge and so on, as we have done in, in France with our initiatives. That's really the, the same idea, it's to spread and to have more copies and to disseminate, uh, to spread the, the seeds. So this is the, the URL for the ma mailing list if you want to subscribe. There is no, um, the traffic is uh, quite uh, low. Uh, we have people subscribe from many, many countries, uh, but not much discussion for, for now. So this is it for my talk. If you have questions, I'm all your, at your uh, disposition, and well, why you not try? Thanks. So the, uh, maybe I will repeat the question. I don't know if it has been uh, recorded. The question is, uh, do we uh, hand over the data of our customers when it's required by, by legal entities? Uh, the, question, the, the answer is yes, but just what laws uh, ask us to keep. Like we don't keep more and obviously we, we obey the law, but just the law and not more. And so uh, the, um, we just keep a uh, um, uh, correspondence between the uh, IP address at a certain moment and the user, the identity of the user, and not, not more. But you need to keep records uh, about the attachment of dynamic IP addresses to members. Yes, dynamic and static is the, is the same. We just need to to be able to say at uh, each moment uh, who is using uh, which IP, that's all. We are all uh, non-profit ISPs uh, declared uh, in uh, declared. Uh, I don't know how to say this in English, but we are. Uh, legal entities like uh, um, uh, <coughs> membership organizations, okay. like uh, associations. Okay. Like we are not companies. There we are all volunteers, and yeah. nobody is paid, and so. On. Yes. You may inform the people if you are uh, asked by the authorities. Uh, we are not allowed to do this by law. If you do this, if you warn the customer that is being uh, uh, that his information has been hacked by legal entity, we can be responsible, or like we can be sued and have big problems if we do this. And 
the important thing is that uh, for now the law uh, doesn't force us to, go, to, to keep many data. It's just the correspondence of IP at certain moment and we, we stick to that. And we will fight now that we are a big uh, number of organizations and with a, a lot of people in it and so on, we will fight to ensure that not more, no more data will be required in law. That's, that's our way of handling it. Other questions? Don't be shy. You ready? Yes? What, um, can you tell us some more about the plans for the fiber deployment that you want to start? Yeah, that's very interesting. I haven't, haven't developed in the, in the talk, but that's very interesting. Um, there has been a promise in the last uh, presidential election by François Hollande who uh, told uh, that uh, all France will be uh, fibered uh, by 2025 or something like that, 2015, 2020, I don't remember, because anyway, it was bullshit. Um, but we were used to, to this kind of premises that are just being bullshit, and now there is actual money put on the table we have a real mission, we have a real entity uh, built to, to push this. We know uh, how they are going to, to do this by giving money to each region to finance public networks. Um, we know how it is uh, dealt with on the, how it was dealt with on the ADSL. It was um, um, Delegate, uh, delegated to, um, uh, to companies. With a, a pu it was a public service, but uh, operated by uh, companies. Um, and it was uh, very unequal, depending on the, the companies that were behind. It was very, and it was very difficult to, for us. It, it still is very difficult to, for us to operate on these networks even if they are public funded, and that's something outrageous, is that it, uh, this is our money. Everybody is supposed, uh, every operator is supposed to be able to operate on these networks, and we cannot. So there is a big problem there, and we are trying to be proactive on the fiber and to influence the way uh, it will be done to ensure that uh, we will be able to operate on these networks. And the big argument we have on this is to say to politics, hey, if we cannot operate on your network, how do you want that a small enterprise uh, can do? Uh, it, it's not possible. If you want, you, you're telling, you have beautiful speeches about how the um, the digital economy is going to help your region and blah, 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 blah. It's a new chance for our countryside. But no, if you, uh, if you give the keys to the, small, the, the same uh, old the big players, you won't have hosting uh, in the region, in, in, in locally, you won't have uh, anything and so, you have to, what we're trying to push is to make uh, the, um, the politicians think about uh, really a local digital economy and so we are the actual players existing and able to, to operate on the networks and so we are trying to push this. And, and there are, uh, sorry, just to finish on this, there is uh, already uh, fiber networks deployed with public uh, money and so on, and we are already trying to operate on, on them, but it's, it's on the way, it's not easy. So one suggestion or tip might be to look at uh, at least some regions in Sweden where this same model was implemented um, maybe 10 years ago or so, and there it is, for example, possible to pay or pay a Yourself to the point of essence, and you pay the 500 euro connection fee, and then 
Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. That we have. Then it's very, very, the operation of the kind of presence just needs to be very small and it's easy for everyone. One, one big problem that we have is that some companies uh, push the, the politicians to, to put a requirement for having uh, like uh, three or five uh, thousand. Uh, Use out five uh, hundred, uh, f five uh, thousand uh, fibers, like five uh, mm -hmm. end users. This is completely stupid because it, it, it's, uh, I mean, it's it's there, and the only operators that can can do this and connect uh, five thousand user users from the beginning is the the big ones. So for us, it's uh, it's impossible. Yeah, that's interesting. I will check. Yes. It's all volunteer based. Uh, obviously, some some of us are in the IT and our sysadmin uh, network operators and are building their own uh, small hosting companies and so on. But we do this on. Uh, on the volunteer uh, base, yes. Yes. Yeah. What? Well, until now, it's completely sustainable, and we are fixing the price to to be independent. We don't depend on subventions and on people on public money and so on. Like we are self uh, self financed. And so far, it's working. So I don't see why it won't uh, work with bigger pipes. Yes. Um, how do you avoid installing local perception interfaces in your system? Is there no mandate, legal mandate to do that? How do we avoid having? Uh, That's a good question. Um, Normally, in law, there is only one uh, obligation for um, to allow uh, to plug a lawful interception, but for um, uh, national security, uh, and that's all. And when we've never been asked for it, so maybe the NSA are spying on the on us, but so far we haven't noticed, uh, you know. <laughs> so. On this, uh, and yeah, fr from the time, from the moment we we will be asked to to do this, we will instantaneously say it, and it will be a, <laughs> a mess. You mean in France you don't have a national security ladder with a gag? No. So they can say you cannot tell the people that you have. No, we don't have this, but we have more subtle ways, like we are going to tell your boss, and you will be fired, and so on. But uh, other questions? So, thank you. <laughs>